know the worst the best. Normally I do music, album, discographies by my favorite bands. Switch it up a little bit. Next one's going to be Roger Waters, but right now, let's do James Bond movies. There's a lot to go through. I've seen them all. I've seen them all multiple times. Uh, I counted 28 movies. The no Time to Die has not come out yet. It got delayed, so boom. Now there's 27 movies. There's another 28th movie, the original Casino Royale, which was a TV movie from the 50s. It's a bonus on some one of these DVDs, but I don't have that one. And you probably haven't watched it. It doesn't even count. We're throwing that one out. So we got 26 movies to go through. Uh, some of the Eon ones. Tuna. Eon, Eon, I forgot what I've never... I don't forget how to say it, so whatever. Uh, some I've seen more than others. Some I've seen a thousand times. Some I've seen... I know one I've only saw once, so... Uh, if... This is my list. My personal list. If you grade it on like, oh, this one was definitely better, what are you talking about? You want to leave nasty comments? I'm probably just going to delete you because... You're a psycho. I mean, it's just a list. I, the good comments are the ones that other people leave. Oh, that was my weird favorite one, too. Uh, here's my weird list. Those are the good comments. So now that I said that, let's get into it. I'm going to try and whip through them quick. We don't want 45-minute video. I'm going to try and do them all like a minute each. All right. Speaking of non- Cubby Broccoli movies, we're going to go with the original Casino Royale, the one with David Niven, uh, Woody Allen, and Peter Sellers, and somebody else, I think, playing James Bond. It was kind of like the, it was a 60s spoof, and they had the rights to the book, and it was kind of like Austin Powers then. It was like them spoofing James Bond, but actually in the 60s. So a couple of, they, they played it recently a few years ago a lot on like stars and stuff like that and I watched it it was it was okay I mean some the middle of it got really boring and then the end was just like a big old 60s kind of Benny Hill kind of romp thing like like all like weird 60s kind of movies comedies did but it's it's not essential and that's why we're leaving it dead last uh number 25 Spectre the most recent one, other than No Time to Die. I only saw it once, I saw it in the theater, and I left the theater like, that sucked. And strangely, I have not seen it on TV. Every James Bond movie gets played the crap out of on TV. I'm willing to watch it again. I'm willing to give it another try, but my initial reaction is like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. And it started out cool with the, like that one continuous shot thing that they did, like... They probably, 1917 probably saw this movie. He's like, all right, we're going to do the whole movie that way. And since then, you know, it hasn't been on HBO or any of the other channels. Probably on, like, Epix. I don't have Epix. And I don't have Netflix either. I don't watch, like, streaming stuff, so. Oh, and, yeah, I got, like, half the DVDs. All right, I tried to collect, these are like the original release DVDs, and they all had like neat uh, special features on there. They all had like a unique documentary, but every time another James Bond movie came out, they'd, like this, they'd re-release them again. Some of them had the special documentary, some of them didn't. And this got, this is like three more re-releases ago, so... I kind of stopped collecting. I also used to get them, like Netflix, when they'd mail the Netflix video to you. I would get the ones from this series of movies. And I'd make copies of them until I got those. But now I don't even find the original copies no more. So my collection makes no sense. It's not uniform. I stopped collecting. So where were we? Oh, we saw Spectre. Spectre stunk. Uh, number 24. Tomorrow Never Dies. It followed up uh, Goldeneye, and Goldeneye like, whoa, boom, like reinvented 
James Bond, and then they follow it up with just another sequel. You know, there's lots of, like, you think of the Roger Moore years, and they had, like, you know, just another sequel. It's like, all right. So that's what you got. You got just, like, just another sequel, and um, Terry Hatcher, she was the main Bond chick, and she was smoking hot in the 80s. Did you ever see the episode of her on Night Court? Or, uh, what else? And Tango and Cash? This, I don't know. She didn't look that good to me in this movie. But James Bond, we're going to talk sex as shit. So, that was number 24. I don't even remember the rest of the, like, the, the, uh, Jonathan Price was, like, affecting the news to, in order, because he owned, like, a news company, and he was creating, he wasn't even creating fake news, he was actually making news, and then just reporting on it. That's kind of topical now, I guess, I don't know, whatever. Uh, number 23, talking about just another sequel, The Man with the Golden Gun. This is Roger Moore's second movie. And I don't think he started so hot on his first movie. And if I was watching these in order in the theater then, I would have been like, I would have gave up on James Bond. I mean, it's a little more James Bondy than uh, the the other one, the Live and Let Die. But you know, because they're going to more like exotic world traveling locations and stuff. But Scaramouche, you got like a, a classic kind of Bond villain, and you got Tattoo. Or what, what, I forgot his name in there, but we're, Hervé Villachez. Uh, he's in this one, but overall, I, I just thought it was like, mm, mm, mediocre. So, then we got number two, 22, is Live and Let Die. Um, James Bond, this one did not have Desmond Llewellyn, did not have Q in it, because they wanted to like tone down the, uh, I read from Wikipedia of all things, that they wanted to, Toned down the uh, the gadgetry and stuff like that. So it kind of came off as like a 70s like crime show. And we're riding around in like American stuff. And I was, I was like, what? Well, it looks kind of like Starsky and Hutch or something. Didn't have like big time James Bond. But it did have the end where he, the um, Yafet Kodo gets blown up like a balloon and explodes. That was, that was the memorable bit. Um, 21. Quantum of Solace. I saw this one in the theater twice because I got one of the DVDs for Christmas and it came with, uh, yeah, right here. You get a ticket to see it. So I already saw it once. I saw it again. And it's got one of my favorite Bond chicks, Olga Kirilenko, in there. I, she is hot. I love her. She's beautiful. Probably one of the girls with the prettiest face on this. Um, and I also read the actual uh, short stories, James Bond short stories book. Uh, I read that during like jury duty and I never picked it up again because that was like a miserable experience but it had basically the uh, the meaning of what quantum of solace means so this guy's uh, found out his wife was cheating on him and then he left her and then years later he found out she was on hard luck and um, he just cared, he didn't hate her, he didn't, whatever, he just had no feelings for her whatsoever. And that's how kind of James Bond felt. I think that's what they were referring, even though that the story had nothing to do with the movie. Like James Bond felt about like Ava Green at the end. That's what I think about that. Other than that, it's a, it's, it's a good, you watch it when it's on like USA, like a, like a, a marathon. It's not your favorite, but it was entertaining. It was okay. Um... Also, kind of just another sequel from uh, the Casino, the Good Casino Royale. All right, number twenty is Die Another Day. Most people think this is like the worst, but I thought it was good silliness. Like it was a Pierce Brosnan one, but it was kind of going back to like the silliness of Roger Moore. His Golden Eye kind of started to off kind of. You know, a more serious James Bond, even, even though, even after you had Timothy Dalton, but like it was like a more modern take. And this one just went back down to like the silliness with all the weird guys. Had an invisible car, stuff like that. Here's my James Bond car collection. I wanted these, I had these are from childhood, and I always wanted this thing. And then I finally got it about 10 years ago, I think, on like Amazon. I, I know I bought it for myself for Christmas. And I actually opened up out of the box, looked at it for like two minutes, I was like, the box is so nice and neat. I put it back in there. Usually, I like to let all my toys breathe, but uh, this I put back in the box. This is collecting dust until this video. I pulled it right back out. So, back to Quantum Solace. It was silly. It was stupid. It was entertaining. I liked it. 
There's, there's some, the ones before that, they were just like duds. They were kind of boring. This one, at least, like the ceiling just made it like rise above a bit, but I can't, I don't think I can put it that much higher. Uh, 19, maybe 19 and 20. I don't know. Cause most of the, the ones I got, they always seem to kind of pair up together. The next one is 19 is the world is not enough. Um, it was pretty good. Pierce Brosnan ones, it starts off great, and you go, hmm, but I think the end one. Um, a little bit more serious, has like a really cool opening. I think that's the one where the, like the boat chase all around like the river in, uh, in London. That was really cool. Uh, oh, this is the one with, uh, what's her face? Charlie Sheen's ex-wife, uh, Denise Richards, who's like, I thought Christmas only came once a year or something like that. That, that was the big stupid line out of this movie. Um, other than that, it was pretty good. Um, here's, here's, here's one that's probably going to get some hate. Number 18. But it's like an undefined James Bond movie. We didn't have everything yet. This is the first appearance of Q from Russia with Love. Um, to me, it was kind of flat. The stuff before GoldenEye... And that called uh, Goldfinger. All the elements weren't quite there at all cooking yet. So, I mean, you got like tough Sean Connery on there. He's great James Bond. Is he the best James Bond? Probably my favorite, I think, Roger Moore altogether. But, uh, yeah, this is, it's, it's good. Oh, am I giving away the list? You can see the list. Um, it just didn't blow me away. I had this video. This is the last James the movie I did not see, and I held the, I kept the video for like forever. It's like I'm gonna whip this out on a rainy day because, I mean, they're still making them today, so I still wait every two or three years I get another James Bond. But this has the back catalog of James Bond movies. This was the last one I didn't see. I have it around here somewhere, but I held on to it. Finally, ended up watching it. Here it is, from Russia with Love. And, you know, those documentaries, like, each documentary would be like, you know, the stunts of James Bond, the, uh, the women of James Bond, stuff like that. Um, finally watched it. That's not really the one I would have been waiting for to watch last, but I don't know. Did I dare put Sean Connery that low? Uh, I think I did, because neither I'm on number 17. I can't believe the first James Bond... Dr. No is number 17. Like I said with the other one, it's, you don't have a lot. I mean, you got M, James Bond, you got the office that they go to, they got uh, the Money Penny, and that's about it. Yes, Ursula Andress and all that stuff, and then you got Dr. No, villain, and he's got, you know, weird lair and stuff like that, and what was it, the Bahamas, something like that. Kind of a slow moving one. And oh, I, I, the first time I saw this was, uh, I was kind of first kind of getting into James Bond. They used to play Octopussy the crap out of it when I was a little kid. I used to watch it when I was like seven years old. That was the first James Bond movie, so HBO. And uh, then ABC Movie of the Week. For, they used to play a lot of James Bond movies back then. It's like, oh, this is the original. My mom was like, oh, this is Sean Connery. He's the original James Bond. He's the good one. Um, and so then I watched, I forgot which ones I watched, but then I rented Dr. No, and I was a little bored by it. It wasn't as, it wasn't as fast-paced as the other ones. So, number 16. For your eyes only. Me and my friend, we always call this one like the greatest hits of them because they kind of do a lot of stuff. He's in a whole bunch of other James Bonds. He's at another ski slope again, uh, like in uh, or Majesty's Secret Service, and they're underwater again, like uh, like Thunderball and a whole bunch of stuff like that. It just seemed like it was like a greatest hits of James Bond. Oh, and he also kills Blofeld. That was the last time you saw like the original Blofeld. Because he wasn't in any of them until they like sort of rebooted it again with uh, Daniel Craig. Um, so it's a fun, entertaining James Bond. It's just 
doesn't blow me away, but it was far more entertaining, I thought, than, like, because you're getting all the tropes in it. So, I was like, oh, yeah, this is what I was waiting for. That's why I put it above stuff like Dr. No and From Russia With Love. So, number 15 is my first James Bond movie. I'm surprised when I made this list. I was like, I'm putting it this low? I was like, I guess so, because I think I like everything a lot more. It's Octopussy. Uh, played the crap of it, like I said, on HBO. And it was fun. It was cheesy. Roger Moore's getting a little too old to be playing James Bond. Um, it's fun. What can I say? And... Uh, yeah, that's about all I can say about it. I just like it. It was a fun movie. We're just going to keep on going. Number 14, License to Kill. It's a little darker, a little, a little harder than... Uh, than uh, what we what we had before. I remember like Benicio Del Toro's death in this. He got, he fell into the, the, the chopper thing. And that was pretty gross. Wayne Newton was even, he was like the bad guy in this. And this came out in summer 89. That's when all the great movies came out. Like, uh, of course, my old well, Batman, watch this channel. I talk about Batman 89 endlessly. Uh, Last Crusade came out, and I remember watching, reading like a USA Today newspaper article, all the summer movies, Ghostbusters 2, and they threw that in there. And the movie didn't even do that good that summer. I didn't even go see it. Um, there's a lot more other, other stuff to, to see. Uh, so let's see. Moving on, we got number 13. Skyfall. Sky, we get, you know, a little more of James Bond's origins. Um... And what's his name? I forget the, the villain's, the, the actor's name. He, he was in it. Ah, oh, crap. Edit. Yeah, that guy. Uh, he had a messed up face. He's another agent. He's, he's all in it. He wants to get on um, Judy Dench. He wants to get all up in her for M. He wants his revenge and you see James Bond's home. Stuff like that. You get to see... Uh, <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. Skip ahead. Skip ahead. We're going to keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. No more. We ain't got room for brain farts here. We're already at 17 minutes. Um, ah, one of the best of the stupid James Bond movies. Moonraker. Yes. Yes, I love Moonraker. I don't know how they thought this was going to be capitalizing on Star Wars just because they were in outer space on the space station. That took place in a long galaxy a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, doesn't really work with going on to a satellite or whatever. And did they did they take this villain? I forget his damn name. And he, he looks a lot like the villain from uh, Kim Possible. I forget that guy's name too. Uh, I'll try and do some research and stick it on the bottom of the screen. That's what I was thinking. And then Jaws gets a girlfriend at the end. That's That was fun. Um, 10 and 11, they're the same damn movie. I ain't saying they're similar, I'm saying they are the same damn movie, and flip coin which one's better, but, alright, I'm gonna go, alright, I'm gonna go number 11, I'm going Never Say Never Again, so you know what that means, it's a remake of Thunderball, Thunderball is gonna be number 10. Um, I'm gonna give Thunderball the edge, even though, even though... Kim Basinger was the Bond girl, Never Say Never Again. The chick who played Domino and uh, the other chick, I forget her name, Brain Farton. Uh, all, all the hardcore James Bond fans are going to be yelling at me right now. Why can't you remember all their names? I already went on for 19 minutes. Uh, I thought they, they were way hotter. Sacrilege, I don't know, for, for my love of Batman, Vicki Bale, but come on. Um, love that, but they, the backstory on this was the, the original guy who, it wasn't a book, so it was written as a screenplay, and the producer had the rights to James Bond's screenplay of Thunderball, so he can make his own James Bond movie as long as he used all those exact same elements, so... Because every James Bond movie is basically the same anyway. He's like, all right, I'll make Never Say Never Again. And 
who's going to really notice that much that it's the same as Thunderball? We'll just we'll get Sean Connery back. Boom, 1983. We got Sean Connery right back. Even the same year it came out as Octopussy. I think Never Say Never Again came out later in the year. Um, and he even wanted to do it again. He was going to bring back like Timothy Dalton or he's even offering like Liam Neeson to do it, but then Broccoli Family, they ended up getting the rights back to it, and we never got to see that again. So I would have liked to see them try one more time. Just steal a plane's underwater underwater fight at the end. It was good. Why if you're gonna keep remake it, remake one of the better ones. Uh number nine, Living Daylights, first appearance of Timothy Dalton. Um, I like this one, saw so this one also in the theater, one of the earliest ones I saw in the theater was this, this is the second one I saw in the theater um, we'll get to that story later and different tone a little harder a little less comedy but guess what Q gets to go more onto the adventure that was fun he got to be part of the shenanigans there he's, he ends up rooming with James Bond in this one you gotta love Q uh, so number eight the silliest Sean Connery one, Diamonds Are Forever. I like it when he's in the the underground uh, pipe and he's with the mouse and he goes to the mouse and he's like, oh, somebody smells like a, I forget, like a, like a tart or something like that. And he's like, oh, sorry, it's me, old boy. He smells like the perfume on him from the night before from all the ladies. And I thought that was hilarious. And he does, there's a chase scene with him. He steals the moon buggy. He goes riding around the desert. That was fun. How could you not hate that? They also have a corgi toy in that. I, I can't find it. I know they remade it, and I ain't spending the money on that. I'll just have to live with that without that one. Whoops! Totally forgot number seven. You Only Live Twice. Uh, I like this one. It's got one of my favorite Godzilla girls in it, Mayhama. Right, this is the, the, the Sean Connery one where it's things are starting to get silly because he's wearing like the... The Asian makeup on it and stuff like that, and uh, his contract was running out. I think they had to fit this in before it ran out, so then he didn't want to come back, and then they had to go get George Lazenby for the next one, but uh, all those elements made like a good, silly, goofy James Bond movie, because then this is basically what everything Austin Powers Part 1 was like based off of, like Blofeld, Big base at the end of the movie that's that's basically you know, Dr. Evil's lair and it's all the spoofs kind of all the tropes for all the big spoofs come basically from this movie you're thinking like goofy fun James Bond movie from the 60s you're thinking this if you think it a little bit more seriously then you're going back to like you know from Russia with love but this is this, this is one of the ones you want to like show to people who haven't watched James Bond, or especially like, other than like Goldfinger, this this might be the one you want to show to people first. This it'll, it'll get them hooked in just because of uh, of Austin Powers. So I knew I should have been checking them off as I went along. I was gonna I knew I was gonna screw this up. Uh, number six. This was one where I saw on H, uh, ABC Movie of the Week. I was like, well, Sean Connery looks a little weird in this, but then. How often did I see James Bond movies all the time? They were all committed to memory. This is only the first time I've ever seen these. And uh, it was On Her Majesty's Secret Service. That was George Lazenby. That wasn't him at all. They slipped that one past like eight or nine year old me. And it worked. I know that's what we're trying to go for back in the day. They just recast James Bond. Hey, whatever. James Bond's the star, not Sean Connery. Uh, they were wrong. They had to go get him back for Diamonds Are Forever. But you know what? This is one of the best scripts ever. He James Bond falls in love. He gets married. She gets killed at the end. Spoiler for a 40-something-year-old movie. Um, one kind of thing that kind of held it back was uh, maybe... The, I think he never came back for for post-production. But they they overdubbed all the George Lazenby when he's in disguise and he's doing a voice, maybe he's, you know, he was like a novice actor. He only you know, did like TV commercials or something. He was like a, more of a male model. Um, but they, he didn't, that was kind of like the one kind of thing you kind of, but all the strange with like all the James Bond movies from like the sixties, sounds like they dubbed over all the dialogue over again. Even the guys like 
Gert Frog, he barely spoke English, and they had to dub over him with like some other actor, and like all the, the Bond girls back then, they couldn't act, so they dub over them with like real actresses. But it seemed like they did that even for like Sean Connery and everybody else. I guess that was just the way they filmed stuff back in the day. Um, also with Spaghetti West, Clint Eastwood, he's obviously speaking English and stuff, but they, they're dubbing over him with, his, with Clint Eastwood. I didn't get that. Um, number five, Roger Moore. Maybe it should be a little higher, but uh, number five, we're going to Spy Who Loved Me. This is the first really good Roger Moore James Bond movie. This is the first really epic one in years, probably since Diamonds Are Forever, or you can even say Under Majesty's Secret Service, where he, all the Globetrotters going on again. You see the pyramids, first appearance of Jaws. This is a great movie. I loved it. Um, big fight at the end on it. Big spy ship, stuff like that. Um, so number four, I already mentioned it a bunch of times. Pierce Brosnan, Remington Steele himself. When he got cast as James Bond, I was like, yeah, sure, that dude, Remington Steele. Was, wasn't he like supposed to be like some sort of spy or something in that show? I never actually watched it. It was always on like 10 o'clock on, I think, Saturday night after I finished watching Golden Girls and stuff like that. So I never, I never really watched Remington Steele, but we knew who Remington Steele was because everybody watched, everybody knew every TV show that was on back in the day. Um, our tensions were not diverted with all this streaming stuff. So when he got this, like, yeah, we weren't disappointed. I think when Timothy Dalton got picked, I was like, oh yeah, that's the guy from James Bond, uh, not James Bond, from Flash Gordon movie. He was the Prince Baron, but. What it wasn't like ah, it didn't blow me away like them getting Pierce Brosnan. So, number three, somebody I did not recognize. Now I think he's like he might be the best like actor when he's outside of being James Bond. Um, Casino Royale, Daniel Craig, uh, Knives Out was great. Lucky, whatever that movie was, with him and Adam Driver, that was a good movie. He, when he's playing, he, he's a really good character actor. Um, he's, he was really funny on Saturday Night Live. We did the coronavirus skit with uh, Kate McKinnon, that was hilarious. But Casino Royale, taking it back, taking it gritty, taking it hardcore, probably a way of James Bond. I remember me and my dad watched this when I was watching on like like another USA marathon or something. I was like, that guy looks so serious as a heart attack. Because he like like, you know, he's more used to like Roger Moore and Sean Connery James Bonds and stuff. But it was that's was this one got me like re restarted into James Bond after, you know I this one got me collecting all the DVDs finally. Um and after, you know, it was, Die Another Day, and I was like, eh. I'd still go see them all the time, but I wasn't, like, blown away and excited to. Hereafter, I was excited until, you know, maybe the last two. Um, but, favorite, number two, my favorite James Bond theme ever, uh, A View to a Kill. All right, this one's the one probably, like, why are you putting this one this high? This is the first one I ever saw in the theater. My mom got pissed at me for going to see this. I was... Eight, and me and my sister were supposed to go see Cocoon. It's like my parents, oh, there's a movie full of funny old people. I was like, ah, I don't care. So I was like, well, we're gonna go to the theater. I was like, let's go see James Bond instead. And she's like, are you sure? Don't tell mom. So we went and saw it, and then I let it slip out a few days later. And then I went and saw it. I said, why are you? I had just yelling at my sister who's older, taking me to see a violent James Bond movie with. Girls with boobs out and stuff like that. It was great. It was one of the most fun like times ever going to the movies, and I loved it. And it's the it's one of the weirder ones too. Uh, Grace Jones and Christopher Walken and Tanya Roberts. Have you ever said that her and Sheena? Uh, she was also on um, that '70s show, so you know she's she's one of the hottest James Bond chicks. And I kind of I like the ones where they the, like the exotic locale is America. This time San Francisco, 
and the big ending is they're fighting on the uh, Golden Gate Bridge in like the in the big uh, blimp, and this was this was great. Roger Moore's last one, and the the scene in the the Eiffel Tower was great too. All of it, the car chase where he cuts the car in half. Uh, this was one of the most fun ones. Even though Roger Moore is just like he got his hair sprayed on at that point, covering up a bald spot and this and that. But hey, he gave it one more try, and it was great. Um, that was weird. That was back when, like, in the movies where an action hero was, like, in his 50s. They're still trying to get Harrison Ford to do another uh, Indiana Jones. He's going to be 80 by the time they start filming that thing. So, I mean, and then think about, like, Star Trek. They're, you know, Shatner was still going into the 60s. They just brought back Picard, and he's in almost 80 himself. So, I think Roger Moore might have quit too early. So what's number one? The one we didn't talk about. Of course it's going to be number one. Even to be a contrarian, I can't not put this as number one because this one is so much damn fun. Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Uh, it's the first appearance of this card, but for some reason it's under the... Uh, line says Thunderball. Ah! Dropped it. Pussy galore. It's the first time they've used like, silly double entendre names like that. Um, everything about it's classic. No, we intend you to die, Mr. Bond. All that stuff. So, wow, this video is almost a half hour long. It was good. I'm glad I kind of wrapping it up now then. I didn't mean it to go this long. But uh, that's what I got for, you know, what, what, I can't, I can, what, I'm going to talk for 20 minutes on that one? No, but, uh, hope you enjoyed my list. Like I said, it's my list. So, don't get angry. You hated my list. Throw your own list down. That's what I like to read. Stupid comments. I, I, I made the mistake of like actually engaging one of the people with the stupid comments. I was like, why did I do that? We're writing back and forth. I'm easily disputing what he's got to say. And he's just coming back with dumber stuff. So I, 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 I can't do that no more. Dumb comments. I got to let you go. I got to give you the cut. Uh, but thanks for watching. And uh, I'll be back for with another worst of best is gonna be Roger Waters solo albums. I don't know when I get to that. I gotta refresh. I gotta listen to him again. And we're gonna have a lot more toy videos coming up. And uh, thank you.